Hi mates, Julie here, and welcome to the Friday edition of The Voters TV. Remember when a towable boat toy was simply an inner tube at the end of a long rope? Well, when out searching for footage of some really cool boat towables to feature in this week's Wet n Wild segment, I first happened upon what looked like an incredibly innovative towable, the Flying Manta Ray. The Sevilor Flying Manta Ray, released in the USA in 2006, is a glider towable with an 11-foot wingspan. Unlike towable watercraft that stay on the surface of the water, this inflatable, and its rider, become airborne at speeds as low as 23 miles an hour. Funny enough, during that same online search session, I was out prowling the seas of YouTube looking for boat bloopers videos, and I happened to find some evidence as to why this really cool flying manta ray boat toy has been banned on most bodies of water around the country. That's right, while this inflatable looks cool, you really can't find many places where it's allowed. And check out this guy's experience and you may realize why. Now note that the flying manta ray does differ from the completely banned Wego kite tube. The Wego kite tube, made by Sports Step Incorporated, was ripped from the market because apparently the people making and buying them underestimated what happens when you hit the water doing 40 miles an hour from 20 feet in the air. That's right, broken necks, backs, punctured lungs, concussions, and there were even several deaths reported from Wego kite users. Sports Step promptly withdrew the Wego kite tube though in cooperation with the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission on July 13th of last year in 2006. But embarrassingly, this was just several months after it was awarded the Sporting Goods Manufacturers Association's Sports Product of the Year. Whoops. And on April 11th of this year, Sports Step did issue a reminder, so I'll go ahead and echo that here. If you own a WeGo, it's a no-go. And if you own the Flying Manta Ray, which is nearly impossible to find anymore unless you can find it on eBay, but you better check the laws and regulations on your preferred body of water because chances are your flight has been grounded. You know, this is just more evidence to back up my sentiment that if man were meant to fly, he would have invented the airplane. Um, Julie, they did. My point exactly. So, which towable will you choose this summer when you're looking for a new tube? Next Friday, I'll have some options for you. In fact, to give Sports Stuff a chance to redeem itself, I'm going to shop around on their site and see what strikes my fancy. If you've had any experience with Sports Stuff products, let me know. Julie at theboaters.com. Speaking of things that fly, in our nautical know-how segment, we have an airborne activity that can help rather than hurt you. If you'll recall in episode two from last week, Captain Pat Doring of the American Yacht Institute joined us to demonstrate tying a bowline knot. Well, since that episode aired, we've had a response, and it comes from the owner of American Yacht Institute, Kristen Cavallini Soothill. Kristen wanted to point out that while Captain Pat was able to demonstrate the easiest way to learn to tie a bowline knot, she has actually mastered what even some of the most experienced mariners in the world cannot, the flying bowline. Check this out. The flying bowline. Now if any of you out there have an even cooler method for tying a bowline knot, send us some video of it and we'll air it in a future episode. Meanwhile, when you're out on your boat this weekend, give that flying bowline a shot. And now, for a little smooth sailing. Well, the America's Cup action on Wednesday was anything but smooth. Alini sailed a strong race, leading Emirates Team New Zealand around the track to win race four of the America's Cup match. The 32nd win was to leave the America's Cup match squared at two wins each, leading into today's race. But then the jury of the 32nd America's Cup received a protest from Emirates Team New Zealand. The jury convened on Thursday at 11 a.m. to hear the protest, and the result of that, it was denied. So, going into today, it's 2-2. This doesn't get any better than that now, does it? And that about wraps it up for another edition of The Boaters TV. We'll see you back here on Monday, and until then, a safe and happy boating weekend to you all. Ah, and while the views in this newsreel do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of this station, Go Kiwis! I wish somebody were here to do that Haka war dance. This 
This episode of the Boaters TV was brought to you by the letter F. That's F for Foxtrot. And meaning, I am disabled. Communicate with me.